Okay, shutter release time then. Here's our components, let's get these sorted out. Okay, so a little bit of molybdenum up inside the shaft here just to make sure that's nice and smooth and never gives us any problems. A bit of molybdenum I wipe in these two surfaces. This, the collar goes over the larger shaft the spring goes over the smaller shaft and it fits in the body here. You may see it's got to line up with the shaft in there. and the shutter release button tops it off. Now I'll hold my finger on that so it doesn't pop away because there's nothing to stop it popping away. We advance, let the film advance come back. The shutter release depresses. And you'll see it act on the drive dog here the ratchet dog and you heard that little click it's just released the film winder and hope, hopefully at about that point the shutter would have released so that's that's on that's all that's required there I think we can try the shutter at this stage and check that it works correctly which I'm sure it does alright here's our shutter now in this case there were no shims or anything else so there's nothing extra to add. Normally rack the focus to the closest focus position drop the shutter into place make sure that the lever on the shutter the shutter release lever drops into the loop of the shutter release on the camera you can rack that focus back to the infinity position Swing the film advance, holding the shutter firmly in place. Now the film advance locks there, it won't go any further. Don't force it. Press down the, the lever, which will allow this to return. I rack the focus out to the closest position again. Now I want to advance the position of the curved rack by at least well, I need to re roll it back at least one tooth because the film advance wouldn't complete. So I lift the shutter slightly, roll that back one tooth, drop everything back into place. Making sure that shutter's sitting firmly because there's a detent that holds it in place. Try the film advance again. If the stroke completes. If I press the shutter release on the camera, the shutter fires. So at that point, the shutter's correctly timed to the film advance, holding it firmly with one hand, flip the camera over, drop the retaining ring in the back, taking my bell jam tool, but you could do this you could revolve it into position with a screwdriver if you want, didn't mind it being tedious. I'm going to wind that retainer ring into place and I'll just snug that up. Doesn't need much. The shutter's now in place, focus is still nice and smooth. That's all working nicely. 
this camera only lacks the top cover now and uh, well we can pop in place the film release button the spring drops down the tube there the film release button doesn't really need much lube I normally just give it a wipe on the inside surface with a bit of molybdenum so that it slides smoothly and that's it pop that camera to one side because we've got to clean up the top cover because we're just about done here's our top cover I haven't cleaned this yet just shows the normal dirt around the body edges some of that may be hiding corrosion we'll know shortly and uh, we'll soon find out I'm going to clean the optical parts of this the viewfinder there's only two pieces of glass in there a front and a rear it's pretty hard to get mixed up with this so a single screw undo that pop that to one side the cover lifts off any dust we'll need to clean out of that but otherwise it's okay here this black piece holds the front lens in position it also holds the rear lens in position the rear lens is just a circular normal circular lens it is convex on one side and pretty much plain on the other convex meaning it bulges out it's plain on the other we'll clean that and we'll pop it back into position and we'll clean the front piece of glass and pop that symmetrical top and bottom there's no up and down for that one next we need to find the glass cleaner I suppose oh no we'll just clean the clean the top cover first and we can do that with a bit of solvent so I've just got some Ronsonol on a cotton bud we'll just see what are, which of those marks come off smoothly you can see the colour of that that's just general finger grease and filth nothing too awful here if the camera has been owned by someone who's a heavy smoker it'll probably have more deposit on it it'll be the tars will have uh, settled in we'll just do the top surface now Ronson I won't damage the paint where it says retina uh, if you use something a bit more enthusiastic that might might do you might lose the paint out of that in which case it'll just be a an empty engraving um, right back to the brass underneath now on this particular camera you'll notice that there are no visible screw heads on the accessory shoe and the serial number stamped into the accessory shoe that was done for a brief period of time with this model and the 2A uh, the shoe I suppose it was done to make engraving a quick and easy process because it meant that they just needed to engrave the shoe it could be done easily without having to handle the top covers um, carefully all the way through the process and then the shoes would form the serial number for the camera it meant that they used very small screws from the underside of the camera top in order to achieve that those screws have a habit of coming loose probably when something heavy has been forced in and out of the shoe too often just enough to stretch the tiny brass screws or the threads in the in the shoe 
and what happens is those screws come loose they'll fall out inside the camera top one of two things happens at that point they either manage to find their way out and get lost or well, the other clever thing they do is they fall into the mechanism of the film advance and jam the gears. Now at that point one of two things happens. The camera stops working and the owner realises he's got a problem and gets it repaired. Or he gives it an extra good yank on the advance lever just to make sure that the problem is cleared and shears the gear up. And that's not at all an uncommon situation. Right, so now I've just got to find my glass cleaner. We've got to clean the glass and then reassemble that. Okay, to clean the glass, I've just got a bit of glass cleaner on the cotton bud. And I'm just giving that a very good clean. Even the edges, because the edges are often uh, stained with rubbish. And I'm just cleaning that inside and out. These are viewfinder lenses, they're not taking lenses, you don't have to uh, treat them as though they're made out of tissue paper and are going to dissolve. The glass cleaner I'm using here is just a normal domestic glass cleaner. I know from experience that this causes no problems for me. Um, as the saying goes, your mileage may vary. I'm using a microfiber cloth to make sure that they're all polished clean. This, of course, little one is a much harder thing to deal with. And when you're done, the glass should have it sparkle back again because it was anything but sparkly now assembling this is always a bit entertaining we start with our front piece of glass drop that retainer in place and now we have to get the rear piece of glass down into place where it's held. Now as I said that was flat on one side and vaguely convex on the other. Now the convex side is inwards, the flat side is towards the back of the camera. We have to get this into place and it is always awkward. So I'm pulling that black piece as far forward as I can. I'm just pulling that tab slightly forward so I can slide that glass down in there. And there it is, sitting in position. Now at that point I take a very critical look at it. Uh, make sure that the glass surfaces are clean, particularly the inside ones because we're not going to get to them very shortly, that's it. I'm just making sure there's nothing in there causing me any grief. Dust out this piece. If there's any dust, I'll be dust in there, you can brush that out. This just pops down into place and it fits over the other piece, that black um, the arms of that black thing. A single screw holds this in position. And that's it. That's the viewfinder cleaned. Nice and sparkly. And it can, the top can go back on the camera. Alright, so this is what we do now. Swing this round about 90 degrees. We'll remove the film advance lever and tyre. This one's a little bit stiff on the shaft, so let's just see if we can get it off in one piece. Generally they're a lot sloppier than that. That's okay. 
there's no harm in that being nice and snug because it's better that than the other way right make sure our film our shutter release button is sitting in position that the button has got that flat side to the front a last blow out to clear any dust slide on the top cover our film advance lever can go back on remember we're, we've got it sticking out at about 90 degrees hold this down with my finger rotate this clockwise make sure that the end of film catches engaged sounds alright we'll run the screw down now I'm not going crazy doing that up I've just got just done up and no more swing the advance lever now what I'm watching for is to see the film let's turn that shutter speed to something a bit quicker that'll do what I'm watching for is watching that the frame counter is advancing and it is so with this just slightly loose I rotate the top piece counterclockwise slightly then do that screw up tight what I'm wanting to achieve is to get this arrowhead right at the front so that when it gets to number one it looks like number one because end of one is the end of film lock I'm just going to rotate the frame counter around let's get it round to uh, it'll do nicely it's at four now when that reaches one it should lock and the end of film is locked that film advance you have to turn the film advance the frame counter away before it'll free up again well that's good that part's done we can put our two screws in the end here that top cover now and all that remains after that is to assemble the rewind the uh, rewind knob if you listen to that click as I press the release down slowly you hear a, little, a very slight click A heavier click now that's released the film advance at that point I can wind on again without having actually fired the shutter means the adjustments not quite right I'll open this up again once we're done and I'll come back in and show you how to adjust that let's do it again here first click second click that's where the film advance is released and then the shutter releases well I ran out of memory on the card there before so we sort of got lost halfway but basically what I was saying was that if you're very gentle with the shutter release and you depressed it very slowly you might hear a click and think that was the shutter released and at that stage if you took your finger off the shutter release you could wind on to the next shot and you'd be none the wiser so if you're a heavy handed bugger like me it wouldn't be a problem because you would just fire the shutter and you'd release it all the way to the bottom of the stroke that's a nuisance we need to adjust that I was going to fit the rewind knob straight away but I think we'll just go straight in and sort that nuisance out so we really remove remove the film advance lever to do that I've just swung it out 90 degrees from the body that's a handy place to work from because we're going to put it back there we won't have disturbed anything with a bit of luck
Remove the screw from each end of the top housing. Lift the top cover off. And I'll just find my glasses. back. Right. So what's happening? What's happening is that the shutter release is releasing the film interlock here before it presses fires the shutter at this point. So we've got to adjust the position of this. We'll swing that out of the way Let's pop that lever on there for good measure, just to stop that running away. And we'll be even put the screw in it so it stays there. I just rotate that until I hear it click into place. That's it. Okay, so and I've got a screwdriver to do that. What we have to achieve, let's pull that shutter release out of the camera while we're doing this. What we have to achieve here is loosen this collar. Now by putting that lever back on there, it meant that nothing could really get away. Loosen this collar. and turn this down. By turning that screw down, what we're doing is we're effectively raising this, this dog up on the shaft. Which means it releases later in the scheme of things. Because the shutter release acts on that lever. We'll try it there. I'm locking that collar up again because if you don't, even if you've got the adjustment right, it will have worked its way loose if, before too long and you'll have a problem. Let's get the shutter release back on the in position. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right. Cock the shutter. Let's see what happens. I'll get my shutter released around the right way. Is that sitting in position? Yes it is. Now releasing this very carefully and slowly. I heard one click, I didn't hear two clicks, and that film released was not released. So I went too far with that adjustment. Let's take it back one step. So I'll loosen up the collar and bring that, rotate that screw back up. That's a bit tight. What's going on there? And that that collar up. Put the shutter release back on. and try again. It's very hard to press them smoothly and slowly. I had one click. It wasn't enough to release the film advance. The shutter fired, the film advanced, freed up at the same time. Let's try that again. One click. 
second click, that's released the film advance, then the shutter fires. So it's releasing the film advance just very slightly early. Let's pull this out again. And we'll wind that adjustment back down just a tiny amount. Undo my collar. Turn that screw very slightly. Do the collar back up. Slight clack, then the shutter fired, the film advance is locked, so we've gone too far the other way. This is tedious getting this adjustment right, but nowhere near as tedious as using a camera where it's not correct. You might think I'm being a little bit pedantic getting this adjustment exactly right, but uh, believe me, there are plenty of photographers out there who are quite capable of squeezing the shutter extremely slowly, extremely smoothly, and lots of people who can't distinguish one click from another. That didn't release the film. Rewind. This can be slightly different once the top cover's on because this can wiggle from side to side in its free state, which will also alter the timing. First click. Second click. Fire. I think that's close enough. I think we've got the wiggle in our shaft here is giving us the grief. Right, so undo the film advance again. Wiggle my lever off. Turn that shutter release button around to the front. That flat side should be to the front. Put the cover on, make sure that's down firmly. Fit the adv advance lever. Run down the screw. Rotate this clockwise until it bring, brings in that film counter position. And it does. Just do that up tight. Right. No, that's not quite right. That didn't release. You press the film release button, that will do the job that the shutter release should have done. So I've got to go back in. We need that film release to... Uh, realistically these days you really want the film release to happen first. Doesn't matter if you get a few blank frames on the film. Because film's cheap. When these cameras were new, film was very expensive. You needed to make sure you squeezed every last frame out of your film. But if you end up with a blank on your film, because you never actually took a photo and you just wound on instead, that's not the end of the world. If you end up with a blank on your film because the shutter didn't fire and you thought it did, that means you've missed a photo. That would be serious.
make sure I get that on the shaft correctly, and I did, and that the release button is sitting correctly facing the front. Get my advanced lever back on. Oh, I didn't do that up tight enough. Oops, something is not right. Did that return to the park position while I wasn't watching? I bet it did. Where are we? Alright, that's the park position. That should be around here somewhere. That's better. Here's our lever out position. You have to be very careful with the film advanced lever. Make sure that uh, everything's assembled correctly because that frame counter spring or pull are very fragile, they don't take any abuse and never ever revolve the frame counter backwards that'll kill it, that'll kill it dead no that wasn't enough More than that. I've just watched that uh, action myself. See if I can spot what's happening. First click. Second click is happening just about the time the shutter releases. Probably not reliably enough. Let's make it happen a little bit earlier. That's good. Right, while we've got it here, let's put a little bit of lubricant on the cam surfaces of the film advance. Now, there are two cams. There's one that works ratchets, one that works in the rewind, and one that works for the advance. And I'm just putting a little touch of grease on there so that they slide it that the pole slides across so smoothly. It doesn't need much. That'll do. That'll do. Right. 
too much time spent on this, let's get it finished. You'd think the number of times I've had that lever off and on that it had loosened up by now, but it hasn't. That's good, that action works well. Right, two screws in the ends of the top housing. If you ever lose one of these screws on the top housing, be aware of one thing. They are very short, the threaded section is very short. Now there's a reason for that. If they're longer, it doesn't make any difference at the rewind end of the camera. You could get a longer screw in there, that wouldn't be a problem at all. But at the advanced end, a longer screw will touch the cam inside, that ratchet cam, and it'll block it. It'll actually lock the camera up so that you can't advance the film. Right, here's our uh, rewind shaft. We'll pull that up. Oh. Let's get the center up out of the that's better, where we can see it. Now, this piece, three pieces, they've been cleaned so they're ready to go. I'm not going to add any lubricant to this, I don't think we need to, and I don't want this any looser than it needs to be. So, spring, the pointer section, the center section, but that's where you set your um, speed your film reminder here's the collar that goes on there now normally you would just take your knob complete and screw it on with your fingers in this case we've got to use the tool because we've got to screw it with the screw right to the shaft. So, close the front of the camera. Put something through the forks of the rewind to stop it turning. Using a tool, I'll do that up nice and tight. And I'll check that that feels tight. That I can't turn that rewind knob against the shaft. And certainly there's more than enough tension there that if I was winding a film, it would move the film. Right. There we have it. Camera done. Apart from a wipe over to get rid of greasy fingerprints, that camera is ready to go back to its owner. So thanks for watching.